We are winding down 2022 and headed into 2023, so I thought it would be fun to do a little prediction. First thing we're gonna talk about are what are home values gonna do next year. So I think on a broad scale for the United States, you'll probably see home values drop somewhere between five and 20%. And I know that that's a big range, but it, real estate is local. And so it's gonna be very market specific on which markets see a greater pullback and a lesser pullback. So a place like Boise, Idaho, where the market was extremely hot during the pandemic, I think you'll see a higher, uh, loss in terms of home values closer to that 20%. A place like Phoenix, where I am, I think it's gonna be more in the five to 10% range, and that's gonna to have to do more with the infrastructure and the number of people still continuing to move here, um, and the lack of overall sales that is, are taking place. And I think that it is important to point out that the drop in home values is going to be from an extreme high so if you purchased a home within the last two years, if you've owned your home prior to the pandemic, I think it's important to know that you are not going to be upside down or underwater on your purchase. And if you are purchasing a home now or early in 2023, that you should go into it knowing that home values will probably continue to come down, albeit very slowly, and try to negotiate that into your purchase now or realize that you are going to need to own the home for probably you know, three or four years uh, rather than just a couple because that rate of return is going to be much, much lower. Q3 and Q4, you're gonna see the ship right itself and we are going to start to see home values flatten out. And as we get closer to the end of 2023 and into 2024, the market will stabilize mortgage rates will probably be somewhere in the four and a half to 5% range. And you're going to start to see a normal rate of appreciation of somewhere between four and 8% um, as we head into 2024. Uh, inventory has been the subject of conversation for the last few years and the lack of inventory that exists. Well, I think that that trend is going to continue. That is why you're not going to see a real bubble or crash in the housing market is because inventory is going to remain relatively tight uh, based on uh, historic levels. So right now in Phoenix, we are hovering around 20,000 homes on the market. And that's where we have been for several, several months in a row, meaning that the market is relatively flat between buyer demand and inventory on the market. So everything's based on supply and demand. So if supply remains relatively flat and demand remains relatively flat, that's why home values are gonna remain relatively flat as well. And so we're not seeing an increase in, or a massive increase in inventory, and I don't think that we will into 2023 either, unless you see a massive run up in unemployment. So if a lot of people are losing their jobs, and a lot of those people are homeowners, then you could see those individuals rushing to list their property for sale. However, if that does take place, I absolutely can see a scenario where the Fed backstops the mortgage industry again, and you see a lot of banks start to do deferments and forbearances again. Banks do not wanna foreclose on people. You have to remember that the banks do not wanna repeat of what happened in 2008. They lost a ton of money in the foreclosure crisis and they don't wanna see that happen again. And so a lot of individuals that have purchased since then are really strong buyers. They're in really good positions with their finances and they're in super low rates for their mortgages. So even if we do start to see unemployment tick up next year, which I think we will, uh, I don't believe that you are going to see a rush of homes hitting the market as a result of that. So inventory is gonna remain relatively flat across the board. So let's talk about mortgage rates. So as we wind down this year, I think we've got one more 50 basis point hike coming from the Fed in December. Then I think that we'll see potentially two 25 basis point hikes before the Fed pauses and reevaluates and lets all these rate hikes start to uh, take effect and, and work their way through our economy. So what does that mean ultimately? That means that your interest rates on your lines of credit, so home equity lines of credit, credit cards, auto loans, 
uh, those interest rates are all going to remain somewhat elevated and tick up here in the near future. I think for mortgage rates, a lot of those rate hikes are already baked into where we're at right now. And what will end up happening next year is the Fed may overshoot uh, with their rate hikes, meaning that they were too aggressive for too long, and we're going to end up in a recession. And if you look historically at every recession the United States has ever had, mortgage rates have dropped during a recessionary time frame because the Fed starts to pull back to stimulate the economy to get us out of a recession. And so when that happens, mortgage rates tend to drop and they drop an average of around two percentage points. So I could see an environment where rates fall on mortgages and get much closer to four and a half percent to five percent based on what the Fed ends up doing kind of in Q1 or Q2 of next year. If I'm a buyer and trying to purchase a home in 2023, again, you should do everything based on your timeline and not try to time the market. People are terrible at timing the market. If you can afford the monthly payment, that's really what you ultimately need to focus on. But as a buyer, there's no way that you should be paying full market rate for your mortgage anyway. Your realtor should be negotiating heavily on your behalf and getting the seller to buy your rate down right now so that your rate is somewhere in the four and a half to five percent range anyway and if that seller is not willing to do that then find a different home this is a market where buyers have choices they're going to continue to have choices into 2023 especially the first half and if you have a seller that's not willing to play you know play game with you then find a different seller and move on to a different home where they are willing to do those things because there are plenty of them out there Every buyer that we're working with right now has a fixed rate between four and a half and five and a quarter. None of them are paying rates close to 7%. So I would much rather be a buyer where I have choices, very little competition in the market, and get a low rate now with the prospect of potentially refinancing in six to 12 months because it is much easier to refinance and already own your home than it is to try to buy a home when everybody else is coming back to the market. But again, I reinforce that you should do something when you are ready and not try to time the market. So if you're a seller planning on selling in 2023, you need to recognize that this is a more balanced market where buyers have power. So you need to expect to pay closing costs. I would offer in your advertising already on the front end that you're willing to buy the buyer's rate down on their mortgage just to have a competitive advantage against your competition of sellers and just tell them up front. One of the things that we do is we actually put that in the photos. Nobody reads anymore, so we're not gonna put that in the notes. We put it in the actual photos so that when somebody's on Zillow, when they're on Redfin, they'll see what that actually looks like and what their potential monthly payment could be because our seller's already willing to offer to buy their rate down. Uh, other things sellers need to do is they need to make sure that their home is in as good of condition as it possibly can be. So I may recommend doing pre-inspections on your home, having a home inspector come, check everything out, um, and then fix that stuff. Uh, and then advertise that you had a pre-inspection done and that the home is in really good condition. So you're eliminating that pain point for that buyer. Then I would also paint. I would potentially put in you know, new carpet and refresh your home. Uh, make sure you get rid of all the dings and dents and clean and make sure your landscaping is in really nice condition. That is the first thing people see when they pull up to the home. So landscaping needs to be super inviting. You need to understand that in this market, if you're expecting to get top dollar, then buyers are expecting that the home is in top condition. If it's not in top condition and you're not willing to do those things, then you have to severely discount the home in order to sell it in this environment. And then I would just expect days on market to continue to increase. They were super, super low for a very long time where it was taking maybe seven days to sell a home. That's not normal. It 
what is normal is taking 60, 90, 120 days to sell a home. It's going to take longer. And for a seller, that's unfortunate because it's more of an inconvenience, right? You're having to keep your home clean for longer. When somebody wants to see the home, you have to leave to make plans for, uh, for them to feel comfortable and view the home without you being there. So just prep and go in knowing that it's gonna take much longer to sell your home. And then if it doesn't, you'll be pleasantly surprised but odds are the days on market next year are gonna to continue to tick up. So that leaves new construction. So builders have stopped building and that's because nobody's buying their product right now. They've got a ton of stuff under contract that they are finishing up. Some of those are coming back to market and buyers are getting smoking deals on those because builders don't wanna carry them on their inventory. But all the builders that we talk to they own other property and they have other phases, but for the most part, none of the sales officers know when those are gonna be released. And I think that's just because builders understand that demand is low and they need to get certain pricing for their home. And if they can't get it, then they're not going to sell. So I think that the amount of new construction that's gonna take place is going to remain unhealthy and low. Uh, until you start to see the market pick up. They just build based on demand. And when demand's low, building's gonna be low. So that will trade off into probably a lot of unemployment coming and a lot of layoffs coming in the builder realm in terms of contractors, vendors that they work with. Um, so if you own a home and you're planning on a remodel, it might be advantageous to wait until some of this takes place because the cost of materials and the cost of labor might finally start to come down to something way more reasonable, especially as builders stop building. Things to look out for next year that are definitely going to impact uh, things are going to be the rate of inflation. I believe that the rate of inflation has cracked and that it's gonna fall and it's gonna fall fast. When that happens, you're going to see mortgage rates drop as well. I think unemployment will go up. And when un unemployment starts to go up, the Fed will pivot and start to reduce their rate hikes that they've implemented. Also pay attention to headlines. I've been fooled recently several times by articles that I've clicked on the link because it says that the housing market is due to crash and I will start reading it. And then all of a sudden I'm reading about the Canadian housing market or the UK housing market. And something to recognize is that those housing markets, those mortgages that, those, that their population pay are not 30 year fixed rates they tend to be five-year fixed rates. And so when, the, when their governments are raising rates like they have been across uh, all countries and economies, their mortgage rates are steadily going up. And so their payments are steadily going up. We are in the advantageous position of having a 30-year fixed rate where our mortgage rates do not adjust based on some, uh, some term. Uh, where Canada, the UK, other European countries, Australia, they don't have that fixed rate mortgage. And so I believe that next year that is going to be, there's gonna be a lot of headlines, a lot of articles about housing market collapse all across the world. And that's because their mortgage rates are not fixed like ours. Now I have to say, nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what the future is gonna look like. This time last year, I was predicting that mortgage rates would be on a steady incline and finish somewhere just above 4%. And at the time, I thought I was being extremely bearish and was second guessing myself when I made that prediction. Now, rates today are at like six and a half percent. So I'm not wrong in my prediction, but I'm certainly not right because I never thought in my wildest dreams that rates would get as high as they did this year. And there's a lot of extenuating of circumstances that exist in our world that led to that factor. You know, so nobody was predicting a war between the Ukraine and Russia. Nobody's been predicting the zero COVID policy that China has. So there's these, these externalities, these events that take place that people just are unprepared for called black swan events. And so stuff's gonna happen next year that is gonna cause all of my predictions to probably not be true. <laughs> <laughs> 
So my point being is that there's going to be stuff that happens next year that I have no idea about, that none of us do, that are going to impact my predictions. And I will continue to update these monthly for you on what I think is going to happen and how we can pivot together uh, on what we expect the housing market to do. The one thing that I do know is that housing traditionally is a very safe investment. And the average homeowner owns their home now for 13 years. And so what happens in the micro doesn't necessarily matter as much. And if you plan on owning your home for longer than a few years, then it's still going to tr traditionally be a safe investment where you're going to earn a return on your investment. And keep in mind that when you buy a home, your buy-in is relatively low, right? You're paying somewhere between three, five, 10, 20% down. And so your risk is relatively low on that overall investment. So when it appreciates, you're earning appreciation on the entire dollar amount, not just your investment. And that's why I think that real estate will continue to be a safe investment. And just look at the market that we're in now. We are not seeing a flood of inventory come to market. Home values are not crashing off their highs. They're just slightly adjusting. And again, as long as you plan on being in your home for longer than just a few years, you will see a return on your investment despite what my predictions are right or wrong. This has been my uh, 2023 market predictions. And if you do like these, uh, I put them out every month on what's taking place in the Phoenix and national housing market. Uh, so be sure to check those out too.